This episode is sponsored by Chavid Properties. Think, create, build. Visit at Chavid Properties on social media to learn more. If you don't mind, can I paint the scene for my listeners? Just yeah, yeah, sure. Show. Why not? Why not? All right. So, real quick, guys, we're in, we're in JJ's uh, humble abode. Yeah. Um, <laughs> in my library. In his library, and there's books all around us, and. Um, as, as Gigi said rightfully, you can tell a lot about a person by the kind of books they have in their library. And he has range. There's things about politics. <laughs> Standard. Eh? Things about self-help. Things about yeah. thinking. It's a, it's, a, it's a nice collection. I can't even go through it all. Do you find a lot on thinking? A lot on thinking. I'm, on a, I'm thinking, huge on, on thinking. psychology. Yeah. The human brain. Yeah. I always say that we live in this environment, in this Nigeria, where people are taught what to think, not how to think. And yeah. that causes us, all, like, yeah. all our problems come from there. I mean, it's, it's not just Nigeria. Generally, education t- 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 um, teaches you what to think, generally. That's, mm-hmm. I think that's the primary challenge of education, that most people are being taught what to think rather than how to think, and then you're being tested for what to think rather than how to think. Mm-hmm. And that's a, especially this side of the world, you're, you're being tested for your ability to remember what you were taught, mm-hmm. not your ability to create solutions out of stuff. Out of, yeah. yeah. I remember in uni, um, I, I went to school in this uni in South Africa called Monash. Okay. Okay. Nice. <clears throat> and just my final year, my third or my final year, yeah. they introduced this course called Critical Thinking. Mm, nice. And it changed. Yeah. That's a, that's a great course. Everything. Yeah. They literally like graded you on how you're able to interpret, yeah. you know, dissect yeah. and analyze information. Yeah. And at first it was, it was so tasking on my brain because I'm not used to that kind of thing. Yeah. So I can only imagine for the average person yeah. who is not used to having to think critically about things. Yeah. Just suddenly expected. Yeah. You know to do that kind of of, of, of mental work. Yeah. So that 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 course really just got me on this path of really being able to think of the things I believed at the time. Yeah. And challenge them yeah. and compare them against other forms of thinking, things that yeah. will at least that will align with where I want to go personally as a person. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, because at the root of everything is thinking, really. Someone once said that the world is a tragedy to those who feel, but a comedy to those who think. Let that sink in. There's nothing quite like two thinking individuals coming together over a beer to share thoughts about God knows what. And that's exactly what JJ and I did. This was our first time being a true conversation. And JJ is an absolute gentleman guest. Yes. Yes. By far, I mean, he, he, he brought it. I think he has the most quotable episode of all my guests ever. He shared ideas on all kinds of things. Money, power, human nature, the limits of the human experience collaboration versus competition, and so much more. The conversation was so rich, so vibrant, stories for days. Yo, JJ is a fascinating guy. His full name is Jafet Joshua Omojua. Kind of reminds me of J. Jonah Jameson from Spider-Man. I love how whoever named him was really intentional about all those J's. He's an author, political commentator and social media expert with over a million followers on Twitter. Check him out at JJ Mojua. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this conversation between gods. It was lit. My name is Rodney Omogadje and you're welcome to The Young God. First of all, yeah. let me just say that I've been following you on Twitter for some time. and um, well, You don't even look like someone that would be tweeting. I thought you'd be like an Instagram guy. I, mean, I, mean, I tweet. <laughs> okay. And just like anybody... Because, man, if I was a rich person, I wouldn't be on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> she? 
She's just it's mostly. I would put myself through the mud and all that pizzantry stuff. I uh, yeah. wouldn't be. No, there, there's a lot of like. If people. I made my money before I discovered Twitter, the best I could do is hire people managing my accounts, and then they say tweet mm. by Omojua. Mm. Tweet by Omojua, mm. JJO. Mm. You know. <laughs> Well, I mean, well, we don't have money, so we'll be there with everybody. Yeah, don't worry. When, when, when we have money, they will not see. They will see us more. <laughs> on there. Uh, because, you know, there's, there's, there's some kind of tweet you tweet yeah. when you have money. I don't want to do anything when I... I just want to enjoy my life. I don't want to go and tweet any tweets, you know? I mean, I, I enjoy yeah. I enjoy life. I enjoy mm. being on Twitter. Like, Twitter yeah. has its, you know, pros it's and fun. Yeah, so, it's, it's, fun. It's, it's, it's again, like, if, if I had the money that I feel like is money... Mm-hmm. Um, I wouldn't be on Twitter, but there will be days I'll just go, okay, what's going on with all these people? See yeah. how Elon Musk enjoys Twitter. <laughs> yeah. Now with all those resources, come on well, down. Well, is even too much for me, but there's a business <laughs> side to this. So. Exactly. So I understand. Exactly. Because he's, he's, sorry to say, he has all that money and everything, but Twitter has a direct impact on his business. So mm. his is a bit different from what I'm thinking. Even on the stocks. And yeah, I'm like thinking that. of a life where Twitter has zero impact on my ability to make money. Because once he has impact on your ability to make money then there is a kind of need to be there it doesn't matter whether you're there every day or you're there every other week once it has an impact on how you make money then you have to be around of course the impact it has on elon musk business is because of elon musk his tweet can change the direction not just even of his own company but of some other companies yeah. right and he's aware of that and he's intentionally using that power Right, because that guy is very intentional. You just act like he's not. He's intentionally. You don't get to that point yeah. without being intentional. Uh, but I wish for a world where my ability to make money is not dependent on the number of people I interact with every day. Because I don't want to interact um, number of followers because I need to interact. I want to interact because okay, I'm fine with it today. Yeah. You know. For someone who's never seen a black person. Mm. There's an automatic repulsion. Not even because they are racist, but because they are human. Mm. The first time you see something that you are not used to, there's, there's just an automatic drawback. Right, right, right. It's just automatic. It's just an automatic. It's, it's just the, the way the brain works. The, way, the, brain, the brain is the laziest thing in the world in a certain sense, in the sense that the brain doesn't want to actually work. The brain wants to just... The brain wants to see what it's used to see. Mm. The brain wants to do what it's used to doing. That's why you go on your Spotify, billions of songs, but you still listen to the same songs. Even before Spotify, your CD player, you have 200 CDs in your house. But really and truly, you're just listening to 10. The brain wants to do what it wants to do. So, if this person has always seen just black and white people, the first time they see a black person, it's just automatic repulsion. Because their brain has not been trained to this new reality. So, and that's why, for me, we need to be careful how we judge other people. Like, because uh, I was watching this thing, Tinder Swindler. Mm. And when it started, I started to think that Sicily was a fool. Because I couldn't believe that somebody could be such a fool. And why was she a fool? And I'm putting fool in quotes now. She was a fool to me because I was thinking, how could you trust this person? How could you even put yourself in this situation? I was watching by myself and then I started to caution myself and that's what I take credit for. I'm, I'm able to caution myself. And then I started to caution myself that guy, you can see this thing from the start because of the kind of society you found yourself. A very low trust society mm-hmm. where you are automatically suspicious of the other person. Mm-hmm. You're suspicious because of the things you've heard, the things you've seen. This person is from Norway where the average person is rich. At least in the context of my own society, yeah. the average person in Norway is rich. They, they don't want for anything that the average person in Nigeria wants for. And the average person doesn't go out to cheat the other person. Mm. Right? At least perception-wise. I'm not saying the average person in Nigeria cheats the other person, but from perception, yeah. they guide you. Ah, it's always guiding. Even the words we use, the shine phrases we use, shine your eyes. You know, yeah. like what you know, the car- These are things that reflect the reality of our society. So she was engaging somebody that was from a different world based on the context of the world she was used to. Mm-hmm. Her brain has changed now from that experience. Her brain will never be the same again. Yeah. But in the, in the period that she was going through that thing, yeah. it was the part of the brain that, I, that had not known that there was a world where people could put you in that situation. Mm-hmm. So I'm always careful to judge people. Uh, and when I'm judging people, I'm also looking at myself. 
Am I judging this person based on a generally acceptable reality? And generally, accept, generally acceptable reality is, of, of course, subjective. Yeah. Am I judging them based on my own box? Because mm -hmm. we say think outside of the box. Ultimately, even outside of the box, is, it's just a bigger box. The idea of a box is really limitation. Uh, I understand the power of limit, you know, limitless, but limitless really speaks to the fact that there are limits, mm. right? You know, the, the, the conversation on boundless, so boundless speaks to the f fact that there, there are bounds, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, the day you exist where those things do not exist, you wouldn't even have to use the words. Yeah. You wouldn't even know what Do you understand? Words, course, yeah. It wouldn't even matter. Yeah. It would be ex nihilo. It would be nothing. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, zilch, which is not a word you want to live in, of course. Yeah. I mean, imagine a world where you could do anything and get whatever you want in the moment. It would be boring, man. It would be boring. Yeah. Like, it's why, it's why, you know, the character of Spawn, for example, when, when yeah. the character was first created, yeah. he was limitless. Yeah. You know, but they found that this character had no weaknesses, no, the story was not really. As engaging. So they created a kryptonite. So they had to now start to like <laughs> give him limitations. Yeah. Yes. Because this is a guy that is faster than speeding bullets, yeah. stronger than steel, can see through things, yeah. can hear very far, yeah. can fly. Ah, ah. I don't even think he would have sold because how do you, because the, the idea of superheroes is that no matter how super they are, you still see some of yourself in them. Yeah. So, how do you see yourself in a superhero who has no weakness? I'm sorry. Yeah. That, that, that doesn't even make sense to me. And I guess that even explains why yeah. we have been created we have been created. Yeah. We are very when is the podcast starting? It started. You started? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> We've been on it. When God created us, I think that's, that's the idea. Like, mm. He gave us breakable bones give us you know fickle health and that we can yeah. get sick yeah. you don't always get what you want you're mortal you're, you know? you're, you're very mortal and I yeah. think that mortality kind of like makes you cherish what you have cherish yeah. life the experiences yeah. Yeah. as opposed to just being imagine you know, imagine if we lived in a timeless world mm. endless nothing would matter nothing would matter because you always have time so I could just sit down and keep watching this movie forever for as long as yeah. I want. And if, if I say the word wait would not exist. Patience not exist. It wouldn't exist because it's limitless. You're not going to die. So why are you rushing? Yeah. And then orgasm will probably last for what? Five years. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you have, you have, you have, you, you have, li you have eternity. Like, you know, like there is, there is no dates. There is no night yeah. and day. You know, so in that sense, it's unimaginable. It's unimaginable. So as much as our mortality has its sad side where, you know, you're losing people and everything, it's sad. Mm -hmm. But our mortality is like when you put somebody in power in a democracy and then you also check their power. Mortality checks us. Yeah. It checks us. It makes you realize that uh, you can't be fooling around for seven days in a row. <laughs> Your life is going. Yeah. Or you can't spend an entire year doing nothing. Or you can just eat whatever you want to eat. You get it? Yeah. Your mortality checks you. So it's, 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 it's the check and balance that moderates your behavior. That's what moderates your behavior. That's, that's what makes you realize that, um, okay, this, this cocaine that I want to take, there is a consequence to it. Mm. Because I'm not immortal. I'm, I'm not unlimited. There's, there's always a consequence. Yeah. So it helps to check you. This thing that I want to do, it's, it's, and without, without checks and balances, I don't even know how. We wouldn't have the world, because even the world itself is based on checks and balances. Like, if, if, there, was, if there was a, you know, all these, these, all these forces that hold the world together, you know, the electromagnetic, the gravitational, all these four major forces. Mm -hmm. If one of them changed in terms of their number or the distance between our planet and, say, Saturn and the sun were to change, it wouldn't even exist. Yeah. The, the life as we know it would not exist. If there's, a, there's one funny difference in the centrifugal or centripetal forces, you would be yanked off, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. So, 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 the, so the, entire, the entire cosmos is really based on balance. The, the whole thing... The, the, the world that we don't know, 
but that does exist is really based on balance. Mm-hmm. So those of us that are in the grand scheme of things, we are, we, are, we, are, we are insignificant. We have no choice but to find balance. We have no choice. Because the big thing itself, mm-hmm. that we don't know its limits, it's very is based on balance. Yeah. So we have no choice but to find that balance for our own small world. For our own peace of mind, self. For everything. For everything, because... For everything. I've always found that every, every time... All the issues that we have, all the insecurities, all the mental health, trauma, yeah. everything, everything comes from, from at its core, an inability yeah. to accept yeah. that you have limits yeah. and that you are still, and even within those limits, you're even not living up to your potential. Yeah. You get it. Yeah. So at least what every human being wants to do, and that's what this podcast is about, right? I like to explore like, that idea of being one's best self, of mm. taking advantage of all the gifts you've been given yeah. and doing the most. So if there's a limit, at the very least, I want to, if this is my limit, I want to be able to like touch it and know that yeah. okay, I've I've hit a ceiling. And you know, limit is a function of time. Is it fun- <laughs> yeah, limit is a function of time. Yeah. Um, if if you start to go to the gym for the first time ever in your life, you're 25. Yeah. You go to the gym for the first time. You you most likely start with with five kilograms or ten kilograms, and you, you've got to be understand understanding of your limits in that context of a starter. Mm. But if you do that thing for, for, for eight weeks in a row, you find out that what you started with has become nothing. Your limit has become... It's not even, it's not even up to your scratch anymore because when you carry, it doesn't look like you're carrying anything yeah. because your limit has shifted in the context of time and practice. Okay, now I want to give a quick shout-out to my sponsor, Chavit Properties, a luxury property developer based in Abuja. They are building something really special over there in terms of a sustainable company culture, sustainable housing that could counter the housing bubble and make life easier for a lot of people in the future while serving their high-end clients at the same time. It's visionary. Check them out on social media at Chavit Properties. Chavit Properties. Think, create, build. We met the other day at um, the Amir Fashion Show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was that like for you? I mean, um, so I had not even met Amir before until the day, mm-hmm. as, as is my life. He's always a friend. I'm very big on friendship, right? And a couple of friends, we didn't even know that they had two different friends got me to post it. Mm-hmm. And then I committed to one of them that I'd be there. And it's not my usual kind of place. Um, it's, you would not, you'd hardly find me sitting down in the front row of a fashion show. Mm-hmm. Uh, but also usual for me, what's even usual? Like I always find myself in places anyway. For me, it was just good to see the creativity of young people. These are not like established designers, but I could see things that are like quite inspirational. And the also the other interesting thing is that the the general the the general designers, like the bulk of the designers, were from a part of the country that are often assumed to be traditional, to not be you know, to not be the type to come up with stuff like that. So yes. so I was happy for them to you know defy those perceptions de- defy those un- unnecessary assumptions. So I was, I was just paying attention. I was really enjoying everything. Um, I saw Shushi's glasses and how, like, she, she's got such a wide range. Um, and before Amir was, what I also found interesting was that Amir was a designer, but was also a host, and it was showcasing other people's work, which for me speaks to the understanding and the fact that really and truly, Especially on this continent, competition. I'm good for competition. I think competition helps. See, look, yeah. but in Africa, as much as competition is essential, we are more desperate for collaboration because the gaps are too big. Name it. There's such a huge gap to be filled. Whatever business it is, the gaps are too big. We're not producing enough for anything. There are opportunities everywhere. So if I'm a tailor, as much as I want to be the best tailor, I need to understand that there's a market that I cannot even begin to cater to. Mm-hmm. So I must find a way to collaborate. And the beauty of collaboration is that when, me, when I collaborate with you, we are not becoming one plus one, two. Our effect is exponential. It has a multiplier effect. Mm-hmm. It has a multiplier effect. And unfortunately... This country and this continent is desperate for scale. 
too many times, many people are doing many great things. But what I see in, in, is that we're not doing many big things. Mm. We're doing many great things in, in the context of our reality. Because yeah. if we put it in another context, it's not even great enough. Yeah. But we're not doing many big things because we're not collaborating enough. So that's why I was impressed by what Ami was doing. That in the collective, you get more. No matter how much of a genius you are, no matter how powerful you are, in the collective, your ability to bring other people like you together, mm -hmm. you always get more. And that more is not an additional more. It's a multiplicative more. It's a mo you have a multiplier effect. And that's what the society needs because our problems are deep. deep. And they are at scale. Our solutions yo, are not. Yo, you, you said it in a, in a, yeah. in a word. And, and, you know, just still, still on that I'm here, right? I was really, really proud of that. And yeah. Because that's someone that... I mean, you, 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 you enjoyed it and you, you understood what, what you just saw, what you experienced because, yes. I mean, you were there. But as someone who didn't just meet him there, yeah. as someone who has known him... Oh, yeah, yeah. So you have a bigger context. Yeah, when, when he was selling caps mm. and shirts mm. out of his boots. Mm. That's how we first met. Mm. And we first met because Jackpot... Yeah, Jackpot. Great guy. Jackpot was wearing one of his caps. Mm. And I saw it, I was like, yo, I love that, yeah. what that looks like. Hook me up, Asa. Yeah, yeah. He gave me the guy's IG. I went on IG. I said, Yo, Amir, I love your stuff. And I was doing my podcast then. So it was yeah. 2019. Mm. I said, I love your stuff. I want to get some. I want us to meet. I want to, like, you know, meet you. Mm. And we met, and this guy was so cool. Mm. So, you know, he, he, he represented himself well. Yeah. On the spot, I bought one. He, he then gifted me one. And then from that point, we had an agreement where. Any guest that came on the podcast, mm. he was going to be a sponsor now. Oh, nice. He would give caps. Oh, nice. So he gave me like... So you brought my cap? <laughs> no, that was... <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'll get your cap. I was just joking. But I'll get your cap. You need to... Like, I feel like it's one of those... Like, that hat is one of those uh, uh, vintage Abuja brands that you yeah, need to have. Yeah. Like, these are guys... The funny thing is, I know, I, know, I know the symbol. Yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. I know the symbol. So having, having, you know, supported me like that and I've supported him, I've always been... An official ambassador, and yeah. I wear it and I tell you, check this out. Yeah. And then last year in October, I hosted Abuja's first ever listening party mm. for my podcast. To oh, launch nice. This fifth season that we're recording for. Oh, them. nice. When I did that, um, he came through, and when he came, he was like, Yo, Rodney, you have motivated me to step my game up. Then in December, he told me he's doing a fashion show as a result of that. Like, that's his, like, okay, cool. And then to come, in February, that's this last Saturday, mm. and see, he took, he, he blew my own stuff out of the water. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. So now seeing that, I'm now like motivated to like, to, to steal. We're supposed to drive one another. Yes, man. you know, you're absolutely right. Now we need to, we need to find ways to, to pull our, our yeah, our, yeah, because our too many, too many times, like we, we're thinking competition. Competition is beautiful, I love and I have to say, it. Yeah. I'm, I'm a, I'm a believer in competition. Yeah, same. I'm a proud capitalist. Mm. Right. Same. Right? But you must never lose sight of the power of collaboration. Never. Mm. Especially in a society where the problems are at scale. You have to understand that you cannot do it alone. Mm. So if you're trying to fix a problem, you have to look for other people that you can work with. If you're trying to intervene here or there, you have to look for other people that you can work with. Um, even for starting a business, one of the things I say is that if I was starting, and that's exactly what's happening now. Mm. So I started my company in 2008, but if I was starting that company today, yeah. I would have started alone. <laughs> that's, and that's exactly what I'm doing now. Whenever yeah. I want to start something now, yeah. I'm always talking to other people. And it's not because I, could, I couldn't start this thing by myself, mm. but because I have the understanding of what two, three, four can do, and I know that mm. it can do a lot more than me alone. And I'm not dumb. I'm not stupid. I'm not weak. I'm not poor. But I'm more when there are more. Actually, more like me. Mm. You're always more. More will never reduce you. It, it, more will never reduce you. So the ability to see and seek other people to come together to do more. is This society is desperate for And when I say this society, I mean the continent. We are desperate for it. And it was one of the reasons why I wrote my book, the Digital World book, mm -hmm. in that, look, we have, we have solutions. We have people doing great things. What we don't have more often than not is big things. And we need big, big things. Big we need things. things to scale.
and that's why like what what uh, Amir was doing with that thing impressed yeah. me a lot because everybody found themselves in it. All the designers, whether it was the bags or the yeah, clothing or like sushi, the mm -hmm. glasses, you found yourself in it. You Everyone can thrive in spaces like that. Yeah. Yeah. And competition and collaboration, they are not opposites. They're not opposites. Yeah. I was going to mention that. They are not that. opposites. Because for me, it's like, <laughs> yeah. I want to be the best podcast I can possibly be. Yeah. But I don't want to be that all alone. Let's take a moment to pause and breathe. Relieve the tension. Whatever you're doing, close your eyes, take a deep breath. In through the nose, out through the mouth. One more time. In through the nose, out through the mouth. Let's resume. Which would you rather be? Powerful or great? I think great because ultimately the essence of power really is to attain to attain greatness. I you, there's, I, I'll, I'll explain. Um, there's, there's no way you can be great without being powerful. But you can be powerful without being great. So tell me, argue the opposite. So I would say you achieve power by being great. So when you do when you do, so when you do great things, so you I guess it looks like yourself, you become, yeah. Because the thing is, you, you told me whether it was power or greatness. I chose greatness, and the reason why I chose greatness is because there is power in greatness. Mm -hmm. There is no greatness in power. Yeah, yeah. there is power in greatness. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You find power in greatness, but you don't necessarily power. If you have power, you can attain greatness, but it's not certain. Yeah. I mean, there are, there are useless precedents, right? Very, oh my you God. You know, let's not even start to call. They are really like, <laughs> historically and, you know, currently, they are useless precedents. Yeah. So, you can have power and not be great. Mm -hmm. Even if people around you are telling you you are great. Even you in your head, you know that you are not great, mm -hmm. right? But you cannot be great and not have power. Yeah. Because, first of all, your world even has power. Your actions have power. Your words have consequences. Your actions have consequences. You have enablement. Yeah, so, there are so people, I'd rather be great. There are people who are compelled to power and yeah. others who are compelled to greatness. Yeah. And the thing is, there's no way, at the end of the day, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, ultimately, what everyone aspires to is not money, it's not power, it's not sex, it's greatness. Because greatness is how you are Aristotle, and thousands of years after you're gone, they're still speaking about you. You're remembered. You're yeah, Isaac Newton, mm. Albert Einstein. Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. Like, you have more listeners on streaming platforms than musicians that are popping today, in, today even though you, you've been dead for over a decade. Right? That's greatness. Yeah. And with greatness, you cannot go to the market to buy it. You can go to the market to buy power. Because if I know someone, yeah. they can put me in a position of power, but they cannot give me greatness. They don't put in a position of greatness. They cannot. I know Shakespeare said that some are born great, some achieve greatness, some have greatness trust upon them. Yeah. But for greatness to be trust upon you, if you are not deserving of it, it will bounce back like oil on water. Yeah. It will not mix. Yeah. It will not mix. So even if... So, and I think to have greatness trust upon you is for you to be in a position where you, you have, have the opportunity no to, to be great. great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But to be great, though, ultimately, yeah. also depends on you. Your character. You know? So for me, I mean, without, without a doubt, is, is really greatness. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, there's, there's, I mean, there's something to be said about people who desire power mm. instead of greatness, like a politician. You know, they... they like. Like I said, with, with, with greatness, you mm. distinguish yourself yeah. and then people give you power. Yeah. People who decide that this is someone that you want to listen to, want yeah. to have around. Yeah. But with power, because power corrupts absolutely, yeah. you know, your only, mission, your only mission is to maintain power, to consolidate it as opposed to... But I understand, I understand why not just politicians, I understand why the average human being wants power. Mm. And the reason is because when you wake up in the morning... Mm -hmm. And the highest amount of money you have in your bank account is 10,000 naira. The truth of the matter is you're not dreaming of a billion. Mm. You're just hoping that somebody can send you 
maybe even another ten thousand naira. Yeah. When you have five hundred thousand naira, you are hoping that that thing can go to two million, five million, ten million, mm -hmm. right? When you have ten million dollars, you start to think, ah, can this thing go to fifteen million dollars? The point I'm trying to make is that. The distance between power is a lot. Sorry, the distance between power and greatness is a lot. Mm. So it's just only natural that you're aspiring to power because mm. power is closer to you. Mm. Power is closer to you. Preach power is a more aspirational in terms of distance. And also, more often than not, your path to greatness, you, you, you pass through power. If you don't have power, how can you even be great? If you're not rich, and because being rich is powerful, mm -hmm. if, if, you're, if you're not rich, how can you touch lives? Because it's the world that enables you to touch lives. And enablement is power. What is power? Work over time. So, so it's, an enable, it's, it's a conversation of enablement. If you, don't have, mm -hmm. if you don't have the intelligence to know how to calculate mathematics and physics and to gather children together to teach them how to pass their exams, you cannot, and that's power, you cannot express that power by helping them be that makes you a great person for doing something like that. Mm -hmm. So, because power here is not just public office. Power is enablement, the ability to do something, yes, the ability yes. to save a child on the road, for you to jump and remove that child from being killed by, you know, an accident, the ability to go into a well, you know, just, just enablement, the ability to send money to someone who needs their school fees paid. To do what you want to do, right? To do what Actually. you want to do and to help other people do what they would hope to do or be able to do, but they don't have power to do. So I completely understand why I would, first of all, desire power because greatness is, greatness is, is there. It's, 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 it's at that place where it is, not, it is not in a place where you cannot attain it. But you need power to get that. But it takes work. It takes. Yeah, yeah. I takes, mean, did you did you hear what you said? It takes work, and you cannot discuss. There's no power without work. I mean, literally, physics says that power is work over time. <laughs> That's yeah, the equation yeah, of yeah, power yeah, 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 in yeah, physics. Yeah. So, so, and it's not just a physics thing. My ability to leave this depends on my power. Let's not assume that just because I can leave this, there are people. There are people that are so ill they cannot lift this. Mm -hmm. They cannot lift this. And my ability to lift it faster, and that's why people go to the Olympics. Because then time comes in. Like, yes, you can lift it, but how fast can you lift it? Yes, you can run, but how fast can you run? How far? Yes, can how you far run? can you throw it? Yeah. How far can you jump? Mm. You know, because really, all of this is, is just a test of power, really. Mm. Whether the power of your body or the power of your brain or the power of the intersection of your body and your brain. And to attain greatness, you cannot but work to think, start with. I think greatness really, at the end of the day, is like, it's one of those things where even before anybody deems you as great, mm. you are sort of it in your private moments. Mm. Like, it's not something you can just spontaneously manufacture. Mm. Like, you have to have if, been if, in your... If, if you tell me this morning now or this afternoon and tell me this person is great, a natural question, and I don't know the person, I don't agree with you, the natural question is, what has she done? Yeah. Or what has, what has he done? That's, that's a natural question. Yeah. It's a natural question. And, it's, and done is a question of work. It's a question of action. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a question of intervention. Yeah. And what were, what were they enabled to do? And also, you can even measure that based on what did they do versus what could they have done? And how do what they do affect the greater... You get it. So there's always, you know, like these are conversations that will always require nuance and context mm -hmm. and layers. Mm -hmm. Yes, they, they are hardly things that... They, they are hardly objective in the sense of one plus one is two. It's always going to be subjective. But ultimately, there's always an opportunity to arrive at the point where we say, okay, if this person was the president of an entire country and you say they touched 5,000 lives and the people in the country were worth 15 million... Well, they touched 5,000 lives. That's not bad, but that's a disaster considering what they could have done, especially because they sold, they had this revenue or they did this or they did that. Right? So there will always be context and, you know, room for context. Who comes to mind that has managed to obtain a significant amount of power mm. and managed to do the right thing with it? I think LeBron James. Um, okay. Maybe if you ask me this question five minutes later, another name would come to mind. Mandela? Mandela, but Mandela is, 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 is cliche. It's cliche. It's cliche, it's cliche, but I think... I think it's cliche. The fact that you if I mention Mandela, cliche. if I mention Mandela, the person listening 
does not need context. If I mention LeBron James, they want to ask why, how. <laughs> so, yeah, okay. so Mandela is is cliche in the sense that it does not arouse your brain anymore. Well, of course, Mandela. Of course, Obama. <laughs> I think. Yeah. I, I, I of course, Muhammad Ali. <laughs> I, I don't even think of, of Obama, or Mandela, or Ali. When I speak of Mandela, mm. and I'll give you this because I think people yeah. sometimes either diminish what he did, like the context of, or the nuance of what he achieved. Yeah. Sometimes is lost because when you think of apartheid South Africa, yeah, and you think of how the transition of power mm. should have been, by any measure in history, mm. a bloodbath. Mm based on the tensions that were happening at the time. Yeah. Because how many times, if you look out throughout history, you have seen situations like that where it yeah. just goes, like yeah. the worst case scenario. Some South happens. Africans will ask you, and it's a good thing you schooled in South Africa, some South Africans will ask you, at what cost? This is my leaders. Somewhere else. You yeah. know. <laughs> but you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. They'll ask you, at what cost? Okay, so no bloodbaths, good. No lives were lost, at least not in the scale in the that scale, we would have. Yeah. Lives were lost, but not in the scale. But at what cost? It meant that we got power, we got political power, but we, we didn't even negotiate economic power because they would tell you that 30 or 28 years on, yes, we are the ones running the country politically, but you look at the country, are you going to tell me that we are the ones running the country economically? But like I said, this is going to lead us elsewhere. Mm-hmm. I can't take anything away from the reality of Mandela. Mm-hmm. I refuse to say Mandela because it's cliche to the average person, mm-hmm. maybe not to some South Africans, yeah, yeah. but to the average person who receive the reality of Mandela from outside and from the narratives that are there. Mm-hmm. It's an African, their, their own reality of Mandela is a bit different. richer and different. Yeah. Um, it's a bit life and blood and yeah. death and opportunities. I've heard, I mean, I've heard South Africans say that um, Robert Mugabe left them with land in Zimbabwe. Mandela left them with poems in, in South Africa. It's, it's, not my, it's, it's not my opinion. I'm just saying that these are the things. So, but I said LeBron James because... I can contrast him with another great basketballer, mm-hmm. Michael Jordan, mm-hmm. who was tested to come out. And this is not a judgment. This is just a conversation. It's mm-hmm. an objective conversation. Mm-hmm. It was, who was needed to step in for certain civil issues. Yeah. But according to reports, including his own documentary, he, he, he could not or refused to on account of his commercial mm-hmm. needs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It didn't look good for his, 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 his Air Jordans and Nike versus LeBron James. At the risk of those, continues to be involved versus the, the Lewis Hamilton because let's not get it twisted. People think it is, it's the easiest thing in the world. Actually, it's the hardest thing in the world. When you have all the money, you have all the fame, and you make it a point of your own responsibility to still stand for civil rights. It's tough. Because they don't have to do it. If Lewis Hamilton decides that all he wants to do is win Formula 1 and not mind what's going on, it will, it will affect his ability to win those from those races, yeah. it might cost him some form of greatness, yeah. right? So I have the highest level of respect for the LeBron James of this world, for the for the Naomi Osaka's of this world, for the Serena's of this world, for the Lewis Hamilton's of this world, mm. people that step out into places where, if they didn't step out into those places, you still would not be able to say, well, why are they not stepping out? Because the so-called definition of their role mm-hmm. doesn't necessarily... I mean, people tell LeBron James, just shut up and play basketball. And dribble, yeah. You know, shut up and dribble. Yeah. Right? So, for me, for me, it fits into this. Okay. Um, you know, I, I feel like people, people use that against Jordan a lot. But when I, when I think about it, I'm like, yeah. at that point in time, when you are the first star of your kind mm. in that field, mm. there's no blueprint. Well, Muhammad Ali did it. It wasn't easy. There was no blueprint for Muhammad Ali to do what he did. Look, the reason why Muhammad Ali is referred to as the greatest wasn't just because he said he was the greatest. It was because he defied things. It was because he was the first in that position mm. to 
at the risk of everything that that could have cost him. And it cost him. People, you know, when we read these things, when we hear this thing, and unfortunately, a lot of people don't even read. Reading gives you even more context. Yeah. When you hear this, things, you don't even know what it was to lose your Olympic gold medal, mm. to not be able to compete where you are the best in the world, but you cannot even go there to express that ability. It's a lot of cost. Sidney Poitier yeah, yeah, that yeah. had to step out at the risk of his career to do the things that they did. So, I'm sorry, Jordan, Jordan already had a framework to work with. Okay, but that's the yes, right. he probably was the greatest in basketball at that time, but he was not even the first of his kind. He just shrunk. I'm sorry, probably a fan. I'm a fan of Jordan, but he really did shrink. I'm and he considered, he, for, for him, it was commercial. No, I'm, 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 not, I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not a fan of yeah. Jordan in that I would defend him. I'm just thinking, yeah. you know, just putting myself... I mean, I understand. I understand. Look, I, I'm not saying, look, I'm not, I'm not even going to blame him. Mm. Because let's face it. Actually, in, in the context of our country, mm -hmm. the people that died for the people, how much are the people giving back to their memories? That is it. So, you know, it's, not, it's never an easy thing to stand for the people because there's no reward for it. There's no reward. There's no reward for it. And when I say there's no reward for it, I don't mean activists that are collecting money, you know, to... Mm, 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 mm. That are already getting their rewards. I mean people that are genuinely at the cost of their career, at the risk of their career and, and endorsements and, you know, their commercial viability are taking these decisions. It's, it's tough. It's harder for us to say because we're not in their shoes, but sometimes just find a way you know, find a way to put yourself there. You know, one of the one of, one of the things I think all of us can be is to be empaths. Mm. Where you can feel what somebody is feeling without being in that person's shoes. Mm -hmm. You will never be able to feel exactly what they're feeling, but at least you can, you can have imagine. an understanding yeah. of where they are. So I've never been a global superstar. I'm unlikely to be a global superstar. Mm. But I know for sure that it's never easy to stand for the things that these guys stand for. I mean, look at Jesus, for example. He's a yeah. example. He stood for something and yeah. the people allowed well, him to But in the case of surprised. Jesus, it was, there was a design. He was not stepping out of line, right? It was, it was a design only because we know now. But if in the moment, in the context yeah, so of So in the that, moment, it's different, yeah. yeah. Nobody, he was denied. Yeah. Nobody, he was denied yeah. three times. He was betrayed by Judas. You Again, know, so, so yeah. that's, it's, it's interesting. I, I try not to use Bibles for this because there are other people that are not like, they're not like Christians, but the, the thing about this thing is there's also there's also you can you can you can remove the religious part of it and still have the conversation in yeah. the sense that this person says they are the son of God, mm -hmm. but especially Christians they forget something that at the point of death he was so human he was praying that this thing is there a way we cannot do this thing? Yeah, I mean that's the most human yeah, thing can do, because. Yeah. Because he was so aware of the pain that was coming. Because if he was so, if he was, if he was in the reality of God, you know, let's get ahead. Because I'm, I mean, he's not going to. I'm not going to. Yeah. But it was, it was so, it was so. I mean, when he went out there on the mountain, I was like, is, is there a possibility that this couple could pass? Okay, <laughs> but, but it's not my will. Let your will be done. Like, that's 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 yeah. that's as that's human, human gets, nature. As it gets, yeah. That's human nature. That's let, let me put it straight. That's fear. Mm. But he was also aware, like, this is not the will. It's for the greater good. It's for the, so, let the will be done. But I don't know, but if there's a way. And, you yeah. know, he, and he went through with it. But it wasn't without, it wasn't without pain. It was not without pain. It was real pain. Real pain. It was real, real pain. Blood. It was real blood, you know. You know, even, even the, the, to take it back to earlier in his life, yeah. those temptations in the wilderness. They were, they were real. The most human temptations you can ever get. Hunger. to bread. They were real. Like, you, you know, think you're not, you're not talking to the son of God. They were still, real, yeah. you know? No, yeah. I mean, man, I mean, anyone... And that's, that's to me what greatness is, right? Yeah. Greatness is... Whether, it's, whether you're suffering, whether you're giving yourself for the greater good, or mm. even if it's just for yourself, I think greatness for me is when you apply yourself mm -hmm. in a way that allows you to take some nothing and turn it to something. Mm. And it doesn't matter whether you're saving the world mm. or building a product or you know, just your own personal life. Mm. But if you're able to like stay the course and do something meaningful mm. with your life, I think that is great. And people or people think you have to be known. No, no, no. To be no. great. No, no, no. no. Because I'm telling you that people in their private lives Far who are it. so great, if you got to know what they're made Far of, from it. who Far they from have it. helped and saved. You can be great for one human being. You just need to be able to help one person. Yeah. 
It doesn't yeah. have to be five million or ten million because you never know how far that one person will go. Yeah. So for me, when it comes to these things, I'm always thinking in terms of the individual. It it hurts me when I'm not able to help an individual. But I'm only thinking in terms of the individual because an individual is a multitude. They change everything. Do you understand? The, the capacity of a person is, is limitless. Back to that word. Like, it's, it, you can't ever tell <laughs> how far that that person's influence and power can go. Yeah. So when you have a chance, don't think, oh, so, so you can, there can be greatness in small, really. Yeah. In small, small is relative. There can be greatness in small. There can be greatness in, in big. I mean, going back to the individual, I think um, we, we, we underestimate it because in this society, when we say, tell people, be yourself, mm. people think it's just a nice thing to say. Yeah. But the truth in that is so deep because, I mean, going back to Jesus, mm. he's the, he shows the power of how one individual can make a decision that affects others. Would you rather be happy or great? Ah, that's a tough one for me, actually. But if I had to choose, I think it's happy, really. Um, it's happy. There's a lot you can do in, in the place of happiness. Yeah, I always say that some men are meant to be happy and yeah. some are meant to be great. There's a lot you can do in the place of happiness. Um, Jordan chose happiness <laughs> in that situation. He was like, nah, man, I'm a pass on this Yeah, because also quick. because he was already a great basketballer anyway. <laughs> yeah, he didn't need to be great in the context yeah, of Yeah, he, he just American probably felt history. like, that's yeah. not my business. I'm not, I'm not, um, I'm not MLK. <laughs> I came to play basketball. But, but one would argue that even in his choice, like, sure, he didn't, he didn't make a direct choice to be, you know, a an, civil rights person. An activist, mm. but... In doing what he did, he paved the way for players going for like LeBron to empower themselves to the point where they can take that risk. Because don't forget, LeBron is so powerful, mm -hmm. he can afford to like take that risk. Michael Jordan was in that exact place. He wouldn't have known because it was like I said, he's the only one. It's a choice, that bro. It's a choice, really. It's a choice. Mm -hmm. Michael Jordan was a super force. You know, the the brand would have bent for him. But sometimes you just don't know your power, so you think yeah. that you shouldn't burn because the brand will leave you. A brand that gives you your own line of products would have burnt for you because there are also other brands that are waiting for the contract to just fall off. Mm -hmm. Right? But you, know, but, you know, I'm not taking anything away from him. The 90s are not the noughties, and, you know, the 2020s is just different, and one has to know that. Did you say noughties? Is that what they call it, the noughties? Yeah, like 2000s. I never heard that before. Yeah, yeah. Are you kidding? Yeah, yeah. Wow. The 2000s, oh, you know. Okay. <laughs> wow, all right. Yeah. This is The Young God. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode... Listen to Side B for more JJ Omojua. As always, do follow, subscribe, rate, and share. And also, check out The Young God on IG at The Young God Pod and Twitter at I Am The Young God for exclusive content and godly vibes. Rodney out.